Do you even lift, bro? Everybody, and welcome back to Love Alt Railways. I'm Michael, and today I wanted to share how I motorized my turnouts without a motor. And no, I didn't use a solenoid either. What I used was this cheap memory alloy actuator wire, commonly called muscle wires. Before we get into too much detail, I just want to say that these crimp wire assemblies I have are flexible actuator wires from Dyna Link. I'll give a quick crash course on how they work. But if you're interested in learning more about this fascinating technology or just want to get in contact to order some for yourself, visit their website at dianalloy.com. Now, what are muscle wires? Muscle wires are made of a nickel titanium alloy that when heated under a constant load will contract by about 4% of its original length. An easy way to heat up these wires is to simply use resistive heating. For those who are unfamiliar, that means we'll simply run an electric current through the wire and its own resistance to that current will heat up the wire. This is why many electrical devices warm up after you use them for a while. This 13 inch long piece of 3 thousandths inch diameter wire that's 0.003 inches in diameter We'll need about 12 volts to push 150 milliamps of current through the wire, enough to heat it up and make it contract. Pretty cool, huh? So why use muscle wires instead of motors, servos, or solenoids that are more commonly used? Well, that's because I believe muscle wires offer advantages to us modelers if used correctly. The wire is very thin, so it can fit in much tighter spaces, and when warmed up slowly, they can move in a very gentle fashion. Let me demonstrate with this thicker 6 thou wire. Try doing that with a solenoid. You may have also noticed that the muscle wire is completely silent when moving on its own. The only sounds you could hear are coming from the power supply. For today, we're just going to focus on one thing, proving that I can throw the turnouts on my layout using muscle wire. To do this, I designed this rudimentary slider system using two opposing wires. To throw the switch, we power one wire that will contract and pull the slider to one side. To close the switch, we power the other wire. To fine tune the system, I made the wire mounts adjustable by a screw. Now, you don't have to use adjustable features like this in your design, but it does help account for some of the errors you may have when hand fitting parts, which is basically everything in this hobby, so maybe a good idea. The slider is then placed under the table. We'll have a music wire attached to the slider that will manipulate the turnout above. Now, let me show you how I built nine of these and installed them on my coffee table layout. Now, 
The crimped muscle wire assemblies I got did not come with lead wires attached, so the first thing I needed to do was solder lead wires to the crimps. I used very long leads so I can trim them to size later. The muscle wires can have current flowing in either direction, but to help with wire management, I used white wires for the ends I intend to connect to my positive terminals. Then I used blue wires for one side's negative end and yellow for the other. Once all the lead wires were soldered, I started assembling the slider systems. There are four main parts, two wire mounts, the slider, and a cover that will house these parts. Each part was designed by me and 3D printed with PLA filament. I used size 2 screws and nuts to mount the wire assemblies, and a longer screw for the adjustment feature. The music wire that links the slider to the turnout is glued into a hole on the slider using super glue. Some of the turnouts are close to the edge, so I had to bend the music wire links for them into a dog leg to reach the edge of the assembly. I didn't include a cover for the side that will face the bottom of the table, so until I was ready to install them, I stuck a piece of blue painter's tape over the slider and wire mount to prevent them from falling out. Next I needed to prepare the track. I won't go into detail on track laying here, but before I secured my turnouts, I aligned them on the table, marked where I wanted the music wire to poke through then drilled a quarter inch hole. Now I can glue down the turnouts and finish most of my track laying before turning the table on its side so I can install the sliders and electronics. To align my sliders with the turnouts, I started by having the turnout set to the closed position, then taped the slider onto the cover in the thrown position. I fed the music wire through the hole and through the turnout, then pushed the slider assembly until it threw this turnout. This is the spot where I need to secure the slider cover. I marked out where to screw down the cover, drilled a pilot hole, then secured the cover with wood screws. Now I just had to repeat until all nine sliders were installed. To test the sliders, I just had to connect my lead wires to a power supply and watch them move. If I had any troubles, I could adjust the wire tension using the adjustment screws from the side. And there we have it, muscle wire control turnouts. In an upcoming video, I'll show you how I tied the muscle wire in with the rest of my electronics and then ultimately enjoyed running my trains wirelessly from a tablet.
So, did we revolutionize the way model train turnouts are operated? Not quite yet. The system currently relies on the spring that comes with the turnouts to hold them into position, and it snaps into position hard. This motion is not gentle at all and creates a pretty loud noise. Maybe it's a little better than a solenoid, but as you saw in the beginning of this video, muscle wire can be completely silent. The size of the system also needs work. It sits very flat against the bottom of the table, but it takes up much more area than it needs to. But the big test for today was would this crazy idea work, and I think we earned an A+. Now what's next? Well, I've still been chasing that sleek, gentle, and silent design that I know can be achieved. I won't be trying out every new design in the layout, so I got some scrap plywood to test them out on. I drilled a similar quarter inch hole for the music wire link and just taped down the turnout. If we take a closer look, you'll notice that the bi-stable spring has been removed from the turnout. And that's because the latest design handles the function of keeping the blades in place on its own. Let's flip this around and take a look at how I did it. The design is now a single plastic part, 3D printed with PETG this time. The adjustment features have been removed and the slider now operates as a compliant mechanism. The flexures here operate much like the bi-stable torsion springs that come with the turnouts. They do a good job of holding the slider in place until just enough force has been applied to push it over to the new position. The last thing I did was change the thickness of the muscle wire. These six thousandths of an inch wires have much more mass than the three thou, so they heat and cool much slower, which will help create the slow and gentle movement I was looking for. Now, thicker wires need more current, but less voltage. I'll be using 7 volts, which should push around 420 milliamps on the wire. If I go ahead and power it, we should finally see that slow movement I was looking for. In one direction. At least it's still functional in the other direction. Not bad. So, I have a lot of work to do before I get these muscle wires throwing turnouts perfectly. Until then, I'll enjoy operating them as they are on my layout currently. If you're interested in trying out muscle wires yourself, I recommend getting in contact with Dynaloy Inc. and learning more about flexible actuator wires through their website, dynaloy.com. And if you want to hear about how these muscle wires hold up on the layout, weeks, months, and even years out, You'll want to make sure that you're subscribed to Level Up Railways, where I'll see you in the next level. Goodbye.